plan commission meeting to order let the record reflect that it is thursday june 3rd 2021 at 706 p.m uh this is commissioner gaskill i want to make a motion that we uh, uh elect kayla west as the uh chairman pro tem for this meeting second that motion this is acting chairperson west speaking can we get a oh a sorry voice vote oh all in favor all in favor aye aye all opposed okay thank you Thanks. Uh, this is acting chairperson west speaking at this time i would ask that anyone joining us remotely to please mute your phones thank you for those wishing to follow along with the powerpoint you're encouraged to access the meeting through tinley park television on youtube it's my understanding that some of our plan commission members and staff have checked in on the conference line and we have some members here in the council chambers as well so we can begin our meeting please note throughout the meeting we expect to have other individuals joining us via phone call pertaining to specific agenda items <coughs> Excuse me. Since some of our members and petitioners will be attending remotely, I will quickly review our remote meetings protocol. The open meeting of, of the village of Tinley Park is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Pritzker's executive order 2020-07 <coughs> issued on March 16, 2020, which suspends the Open Meetings Act provisions relating to in-person attendance by members of a public body. The Open Meetings Act requires public bodies to allow for public comment Therefore, this meeting will include public comment via the established protocol for both remote and in-person attendance. Even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide mm -hmm. comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Please just remember to wait until I address you, and please keep your phones muted. Thank you. We'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commission Secretary, please call the roll. Commissioner Manning. Present. Commissioner Gatto. Here. Commissioner West. Present. Commissioner Gaskill. Present. Commissioner Aikinson. Here. Commissioner Vick. Commissioner Loshudo. Here. Chairman Gray. Thank you. Staff, are there any communications for the commission? Not at this time. Okay. Tonight, we're approving the May 20th meeting minutes. As we just had a meeting last week, staff did not have the opportunity to complete those minutes for May 27th for approval tonight, which will be reviewed on June 17th. The first item this evening is a public hearing for the variation request by Daniel Kelly on behalf of Centerpoint Integrated Solutions to permit a 290.5 square foot wall sign instead of the maximum 120 foot at 7061-7063 159th Street in the B2 Community Shopping Zoning District. This item also includes final site plan and architectural approval. Uh, I would like to note that we have right here in front of me the certification of publication. May I have a motion to open the public hearing? Commissioner Gask, let me make a motion. I second that motion. I'll ask for a voice vote. Are there any opposed to this motion? Hearing none, motion is carried. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter will be sworn in before they speak after staff's presentation. Dan, please proceed with the presentation. Sorry. Were the minutes of the, of the um, May 20th, May 20th, were those with the packet? believe they were <coughs> electronically yeah maybe that was a mistake with me on the script I think there might have been it's on the agenda yeah, yeah it is in there uh, sorry but may, can we approve those just at the end of the meeting then or yeah we can yeah just continue on with this yeah and unless you need a reference to the minutes from the prior uh, I, I don't think okay yeah we can reference. we can make a motion okay. approval. We'll do that at the end, and then we'll okay. approve those minutes. Sorry about that. 
Um, yeah, so this is the public hearing for the floor and decor redevelopment. We had the workshop at the previous meeting. Um, just as a reference, we referenced the staff report and with the minutes, so um, we don't have to repeat everything that's in the staff report that I'm going to repeat here. And in general, this didn't have too many concerns or questions, so I'm going to hit kind of the main points of the project um, and then some of what's changed or agreed upon between that meeting and here. Um, but otherwise, we'll uh, we'll just give you a brief synopsis of it. Uh, so this is the existing site here, which is a Burlington and Hobby Lobby, uh, located at 7061-7063, 159th Street. Uh, and this request is for site plan and architectural approval. So there's some site plan changes as well as some architectural changes with this project, as well as a sign variance. Uh, for floor and decor going into the site. So floor and decor is looking to occupy the uh, what's currently Burlington, um, and Burlington is going to be looking, they're going to be moving over to the Tinley Park Plaza Bricksmore development uh, that's located to the west of this um, next to the Waltz and has a new grocer going in there as well. Um, this site is located on the south side of 159th Street. It's near the intersection of 159th and Harlem. Uh, the site was originally developed in 1971 for Kmart and then uh, was there until 1995 when they moved to the uh, site that's now going to be Pete's Fresh Market uh, that was the Super Kmart uh, further down Harlem. And it was vacant for a couple years after that, which is when Burlington and Hobby Lobby moved into this. Uh, they did do some site upgrades at that time, but it was fairly minimal. Uh, the site was pretty much one of the first sites built out here, and uh, and that was in 1971, so it was largely just an asphalt parking lot. So they did put in some upgrades in that 1998 approval, <coughs> put in a few end islands uh, and a boulevard. Uh, but otherwise, it, it largely remains kind of looking like it was in 1971. So uh, this is really hoping with this project to upgrade the facade as well as the site um, on this project. This is the original site plan or the last approved site plan from uh, 1998, which shows either the Hobby Lobby site on the west side of the property and on Burlington on the east side for that building. Uh, and it's, again, fairly far back off 159th Street with a couple outlets there, including uh, Burger King, which is part of the same parcel as, as this property, and then a separate actual outlet that's a separate lot for Midas, uh, closer to 159th on the east side of the property. And this is next to uh, Menards, which is to the east of it, uh, and pre which was previously the run and town The site zone B2, which is our community shopping zoning district, and it's similarly B2 to the south, the west, and to the east of this. Uh, to the west of this is that Tinley Park Plaza Bricksmore Shopping Center. Uh, recently came before you guys about a year ago. I believe most of you were on the commission at that time uh, for the approval there for, one, for, for the facade and site upgrades for that property. Uh, to the east of this is, again, the Brumantown Mini Mall, uh, which is pretty much all Menards now. So Menards has the Brumantown Mini Mall Center, as well as what was uh, the old newspaper and uh, the name of the, the the store escapes me that it was originally uh, constructed as. So that's Gateway. Every, what's it? Gateway. Yeah, was it Gately? Gately's, yes. Gately's. There we go. Get the, Originally Gately's store, um, and then was most recently before Menards, uh, a newspaper center. Uh, to the north of this is Orland Park, and that's across 159th Street. It's in their biz zoning district, which is, again, every town has a little bit different zoning code, but it's fairly comparable to our B2, B3 zoning uh, that's around this area. Uh, the kind of most important change here for floor and decor to move into this building is really the exterior uh, of the structure itself. So with them looking to occupy around 
a little over 70,000 square feet, a fairly large space. They're looking to modernize that a little <coughs> bit, help it fit their corporate image. So if you go to most floor and decor sites, they kind of have a clean, modern paint job look, lots of grays. Uh, and that's kind of what they're looking to do here, as well as fix kind of some of the, or, or, or change, I guess, of some of those uh, architectural elements on the building as well. Uh, make it look a little more modern, clean, and updated all around there. Um, and that's on the front facade where they're, they're doing that portion of the space. And then the other elevation on the slide is the, uh, the east side of the building, which is right now been left pretty much to, to, to be look like the back of a shopping center. Um, it doesn't, not too many people park over there, and I don't think it's ever really been used for much. Um, but with, with these site plan changes, they'll be looking to do like a customer pickup area on that side. So there's going to be a little bit more traffic. And so they're carrying around some of those facade elements there uh, to the east side of the building to, to make that a little more attractive as well, too. Um, so our first kind of open item was just to review the overall elevation changes uh, for floor and decor specifically. And I think at the hearing, uh, most of the plan commission liked the overall look of what they were proposing to do here. Um, the, the other kind of part of this is as you look at the architectural standards that we have is to really look at the building as a whole and how this will look. Um, one of the concerns being that you're, you're upgrading part of the facade obviously and not and the other parts kind of being left as it is now with the Hobby Lobby side. So uh, the timing of this is a little different because floor and decor kind of has their own timeline that they're moving forward on and then Hobby Lobby has kind of a separate one and they're working with the owner on renewing their lease um, and, and hopefully staying here long term in the center as well. So with that in mind, they're, they've been working with us, made a submittal for the architectural side of it. We still, I think, have some, some work to do there to really kind of blend the facades a little bit better. Um, but we have worked with them, and both Hobby Lobby and the owner have, have agreed um, to put a, a reasonable deadline on this just to make sure that we're not having half a building that looks updated and modern, half the building looking like it was from the 90s. So um, they have, uh, we've agreed to basically have a permit submitted by the end of 2021 and then to have the work completed by the end of 2022. And talking with Hobby Lobby, their, their goal is to actually finish everything this year, but we wanted to build in that flexibility for them just, just in case something happens, we don't want to have to come back for that condition. So but we'll bring them in some flexibility there. And that's in our recommended conditions uh, for that second site plan and architectural motion. Uh, lastly is the, the painting of the rear facade, which the property owner agreed to do is basically paint that rear facade at the same time, not just paint the uh, floor and decor portion, so it'll all be one color painted at the same time. Uh, I think it'll make it look better and it avoids some kind of future maintenance issues there as well. So that was uh, placed as a recommended condition on the motion you guys have as well. Uh, I won't go through all the site plan changes here. We did last time a little bit more, but the gist of it is adding some more end islands to the parking lot, um, adding some more trees to those end islands. Any trees that are missing in the parking lot uh, will be uh, will be replaced. And then a lot of traffic control related stuff here. So stop bars, stop signs, uh, scraping at the entrances. And there was really a focus at kind of that main intersection when you enter off 159th Street at the light uh, to kind of make that a little clearer because there has been some kind of traffic issues there as you're traversing between all of these properties that are interconnected. Uh, we wanted to make sure that intersection functioned the same as all of the other ones. So uh, it's got some similar, similar striping and uh, traffic control signage there. And there wasn't too many concerns at the meeting about the, the, the overall site plan. And it generally agreed upon it was uh, positive and an improvement out there. Uh, and then we also have just 
some final engineering comments that may need to be uh, finalized out here. So some things like erosion control and things like that, we need to uh, sum up. So we always kind of have to, it's kind of a catch all to make sure that we put a recommended condition for, for final engineering approval. Uh, lastly was the lighting on the site. So what uh, the original plans just had lighting getting upgraded on the floor and decor side and our recommendation was to really make sure that's done at, at the first phase um, and not done in two separate phases because that kind of creates not only a, a look of different light fixtures out there, uh, but the light actual color and, and, and appearance of the site kind of changes too. And that's, that's not what we want. We kind of want a uniform look out there even in this transition phase. So. We've recommended a condition there as well um, to make sure the lighting is kind of upgraded with that uh, first phase of the site. Uh, the, the public hearing today is really to, just to cover the, the sign variant, so everything else is kind of covered under the site plan and architectural approvals. Uh, that's under your guys' jurisdiction, but they do have a variance for the wall sign on this property. Uh, it, there's kind of two requirements for the size of a wall sign. One is that it's one square foot of signage for each lineal foot of frontage that a tenant has. Um, and they actually are below that here. They have 294 feet of frontage, so a pretty long, big space. Um, and the sign is under that with its square footage. But there is also a total maximum of 120 square feet um, in our code. So that is what they're looking to exceed and again, it's really been designed for that sign, so the facade, it kind of fits within it. Um, it's also pretty far back off the street, so as some of the commissioners mentioned, you really want to be able to see the sign from a kind of wayfinding perspective uh, for a tenant that's this large. Um, and this really fits in kind of with what we've approved at Bricksmoor uh, for Burlington and for the grocer. Uh, for Aldi, uh, Sam's Club, they've all kind of had similar requests for those major anchor tenants in this area. So, uh, nothing that's kind of out of the ordinary, I guess, for the area for a tenant this size. Uh, and that's it for my staff report. So I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys if you have any other questions. Thank you. Commission, do you have any comments or discussions on this matter? I'll call on you in order. Commissioner Gaskell? Uh, no comments. Commissioner Aitchison? No comments. Commissioner Manny? No comments. Commissioner Gatto? No comments. Commissioner Lasciuto? No comments. Does the petitioner wish to present anything to the commission on this item? Well, we have nothing to add in addition to the staff report. I couldn't quite hear that. Uh, All good? OK, yeah. thanks. <laughs> Is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? Commission, is there any further discussion on this matter? No. If there are no further questions or discussion, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. I second this motion. Motion made by Commissioner Manny, seconded by Commissioner Gaskell. Ga Gatto, sorry. Learning everybody's faces. I'll ask for a voice vote. Are there any opposed to this motion? Commissioner, are there any further comments or discussions regarding this matter? Hearing no further comments, Dan, can you review the draft standard of approval on these requests? Sure. Uh, this is primarily just, again, for the, the, the standards for a variation that really just cover that, that sign size variation. So uh, there are the three kind of state statute required standards. Uh, the first being that the property in question can't cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations in the district. Um, for this one, it's just that the sign would be difficult to read from a distance and from roadways. Uh, the proposed sign uh, size has been properly designed uh, for and is proportionate within the size of the space on that front facade. Uh, that's been designed specifically for this signage. Uh, the second standard is that uh, the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances, and that's that the property is existing, uh, has 
had similar size signage for many years, uh, and that the size of the signs remains uh, compatible with the size allowance calculations. Um, it just exceeds the maximum size, the overall floor area and frontage length and overall facade design um, allow this sign to look proportionate on that site. Uh, the third standard is that the variation, if granted, doesn't alter the essential character of the locality, and that finding is basically that the signage uh, has been approved for many of the surrounding <coughs> properties and for similar large anchor tenant properties, uh, and that the sign is, again, proportionate to the size of the tenant space and the facade that's designed out there. Uh, there's the other kind of uh, considerations that we have as well in your staff report, but we don't do specific findings for those, but those are there for your consideration as well. Thank you for re reviewing the draft standards for approval. There are two motions for this item. Can I have the first motion regarding the sign variation? This is Commissioner Gatto. I'd like to make a motion to recommend that the Village Board grant Daniel Kelly on behalf of Center Point Integrated Solutions, a uh, variation from section IXF1, wall signs in business districts of the zoning ordinance to permit a wall sign that is 290.5 square foot instead of the maximum of 120 square foot and is 10 foot three inches in height instead of the, max, the maximum of seven foot at 7061 159th Street in the B2 Common Shopping Zoning District in accordance with plans submitted and adopted findings of fact as proposed by the village staff in the June 3rd, 2021 staff report. Commissioner Gaskell. The Commissioner Rashuda, I second that motion. <laughs> motion made by Commissioner Gaskell, seconded by yeah, Commissioner. I'm so no, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> seconded by Commissioner Lashuto. It's all the G names. Secretary, may I have a roll call? Commissioner Manny. Yes. Commissioner Gatto. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner West. Yes. Commissioner Gasco. Yes. Commissioner Atkinson. Yes. Commissioner Lushido. Yes. May I have the second motion regarding site plan approval? Oh, I'm sorry, motion is carried. May I have the second motion regarding site plan approval? Uh, this is Commissioner Rochelle. I'd like to make a motion to grant the petitioner, Daniel Kelly, on behalf of Center Point Integrated Solutions, site plan and architectural approval for proposed changes at 7061 to 7063 159th Street in the B2 Community Shopping Zoning District in accordance with the plan submitted and subject to the following conditions. Number one, approval is subject to final engineering review and approval by the village engineer. Number two, approval is subject to the parking lot, uh, light poles fixtures, and building light fixtures matching and being replaced at the same time during the required phase one work. Number three, the rear uh, facade uh, shall be painted and completed in phase one of work and be one color slash shade. Number four, the front facade upgrades that are part of phase two work on the Hobby Lobby portion of the building shall have a permit submitted by December 31st, 2021 and be completed by December 31st, 2022. The facade changes shall be in conformance uh, with all architectural review standards in section 2.U.6 of the zoning ordinance. I second that motion. Good. Motion made by Commissioner Lasciuto, seconded by Commissioner Gatto. Secretary, may I have a roll call? Commissioner Manny. Yes. Commissioner Gatto. Yes. Commissioner West. Yes. Commissioner Gasco. Yes. Commissioner Atkinson. Yes. Commissioner Lasciuto. Yes. Motion carried. The site plan is approved at this meeting and the sign variation will be reviewed by the village board at their June 15th meeting. 
item number two. Uh, the second item we have this evening is a workshop and public hearing to consider recommending that the Village mm -hmm. Board grant Robert Bettinardi on behalf of Excel Technologies Incorporated, doing business as Bettinardi Golf, property owner, a special use permit for a substantial deviation from the planned unit development with exceptions from the zoning ordinance for the property located at 7800 Graphics Drive in the ORI PUD Office and Restricted Industrial Hickory Creek PUD Zoning District. The request will include site plan approval to allow a parking expansion in the front yard. We will start with a workshop portion of the meeting. Dan, will you please make your presentation? Yes, thank you, Acting Chairperson West. Uh, this is our as you said, a combined workshop public hearing. So with so projects that are a little bit simpler, we try and combine them if, if we don't think there's any kind of substantial building or, or site changes uh, that maybe couldn't be resolved with a condition or something like that. So we have it combined here. Uh, and this is very similar to a request that was before you guys, one property away just a few months ago. So. Uh, also by Bettinardi and the same petitioner. So this is for their main headquarters for that one was for the building that Bettinardi was expanding into. Uh, and that was that one was at 7650 Graphics Drive and the property before you today is 7800 Graphics Drive, uh, which is their principal headquarters and identifiable if you're driving on a I-80, you can definitely you can see their sign pretty visibly from there. Um, the, so the proposed site is a 2.12 acre property. It's on the north side of Graphics Drive. It's zoned office and restricted industrial. Uh, and this is part of the Hickory Creek PUD. Uh, and the site is approximately, uh, has a, or has an approximately 32,780 square foot building. Uh, parking lot areas, a detention pond, and a trash enclosure on the property. So fairly basic and kind of light industrial uh, production site here. Uh, the subject site was originally approved in 1994. It was developed by Vernon Development and was purchased by Bettinardi uh, in 1996 for their, for their use. Uh, the building was 20,000 square feet around that time. Uh, it was office and warehouse. And then in 2004, they came uh, forward with an around 12,000 square foot addition on the back side of this property, which is the north side, or on the left on the images on your screen. Um, and they also did some uh, parking lot additions and some overall site changes to increase the parking uh, in the site generally for their use, which is a little more uh, office oriented with manufacturing um, and then employees there but not necessarily a, a lot of heavy truck traffic out of here so it was designed with a little bit heavier parking out there in 2004. Um, in 2019 they Bettinardi had bought that property at 7650 Graphics Drive which is two properties to I guess the east is the star is the subject site here in between them is Pro Shred. Um, so there's kind of one building between their two properties there. Uh, they bought that and they came before you guys to put an addition on that building uh, that they're sharing with Igor and doing a lease back uh, proposal with. And that was approved in April 2012 for that addition as well as um, kind of a similar front yard parking expansion to, to their site. Uh, really trying to make sure they have enough parking for any visitors they have, uh, any employees. They've been expanding, which is good to have them in our town expanding, uh, but they want to make sure they have as much parking as they can so they can really utilize these sites to their full potential here. Um, and that was approved again in April 2021 20, 20, uh, for that parking expansion there as well. Um, this is in the Hickory Creek PUD, which was a planned unit development that was approved in 2006. What's fairly unique is that their two properties are two of the four properties that are in the planned unit development uh, that were not, that were developed before that PUD kind of came into place. So it, it allows for some flexibility of the uses, um, but doesn't fully control uh, the 
development aspects on these sites because it was, again, developed prior to those PV regulations in place. The, that lot to the, the east corner of this property, uh, the southeast corner of the PUD, uh, is the ADENOV heating and cooling site. That is in the PUD, even though the, the exhibit doesn't really show that. Uh, that'll be corrected going forward, but we did make sure with the annexation and rezoning uh, ordinances that that site was included. Uh, their proposed site plan here is it, really pretty simple. So they're expanding the parking on the southwest side. It's currently a landscape area uh, with a few trees and some minor landscaping kind of on the bottom. So they're extending that, that row of parking into a landscape area. Um, that's obviously in the front yard of the property, which isn't permitted by right in our zoning code. Um, so that's where the substantial deviation uh, from the PUD comes into play. And they're in the request that's before you today. Um, there are some trees there, so they're looking to basically replant similar trees um, around the pond that is over there. Uh, this is an, kind of an example of where they're looking to place them. It may be a little flexible. They have the sign that's out there as well, so um, they may move those depending on, on how it looks to make sure they maintain visibility to their, to their signage and their building the way they want. But, the trees being removed will be um, replanted elsewhere on site. Um, they're also making some minor changes to the entrance of the site, the radius of the curbs, um, just to allow trucks to more easily access the site. And then lastly, they're adding uh, a light pole out there, which is pretty dark on the site. There's not too much light out there now, um, being an industrial park, but they're gonna add that to not only light the parking that they're adding, but also just kind of generally light that entrance, uh, provide a little more security around the, the entrance to the site. Uh, for the front, the front yard parking, again, is that kind of main request outside of the site plan approval before you today, uh, what the public hearing will be on, and that's really there um, to, the, the request that really looks at how does this relate to the PV that's there um, and kind of the surrounding area. So if you look at the, the map on the screen, you can kind of see there is already existing front yard parking out here. It is a suburban uh, office business park. So it's, it's become pretty standard from, from the time this was developed, which was the, any, anywhere from the 80s to the mid 2000s for these buildings. Um, obviously heavy, heavily auto oriented and there's not too many sidewalks or anything out there. So it is an auto oriented, truck oriented uh, corridor out there that has a heavy uh, parking use. And so they're just looking to it kind of match what's out there in terms of that front yard parking. Um, so that's kind of our first open items is one to review that overall site plan layout, which is fairly minor changes. And then um, two is Again, the condition this on final engineering approval. We haven't quite had those final engineering plans in, so they haven't reviewed grades, storm water, um, things like that. So. Um, and then I guess the the other open item that's not on here would just be reviewing the um, the proposed landscaping, and then just that proposed PUD the PUD exception that they're requesting in general here. So, uh, that's my staff report, so I'll hand it back to you. Commission, do you have any comments or discussion on this matter? I'll call you in order. Commissioner Gaskell? No comment. Commissioner Aitchison? Did we lose her? Commissioner Aitchison? Might be muted. Okay. Commissioner Manny? No comment. Commissioner Gatto? No comment. Commissioner Lasciuto? All right. I hit the wrong button, guys. My only comment is that I'm in agreement with staff recommendations for open item one and two. Yeah, this is Commissioner Lasciuto. I have no comment. 
Does the petitioner wish to introduce themselves or have anything they would like to present to the commission on the workshop portion of this item? No. Okay. Um, also, I would like to share that we have, I have in front of me proof of the certification of publication. With the workshop complete, may I have a motion to open the public hearing? I make a motion. Commissioner Gaskell, I make a motion to open the public hearing. I second the motion. Motion made by Commissioner Gaskell, seconded by Commissioner Manny. Uh, I will ask for a voice vote. Are there any opposed to this motion? Hearing none, motion is carried. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter will be sworn in before they speak after staff's presentation. Dan, if you have anything further, please proceed. No, nope, I think I covered everything in the workshop. So. Does the petitioner wish to present anything to the commission on this item? Hearing none. Commission, do you have any further comments or discussion on the matter? None. Do I need to run through everybody? Sorry. No? Okay. Is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? If there are no further questions or discussion, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. I second that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Manny, seconded by Commissioner Gatto. I will ask for a voice vote. Are there any opposed to this motion? Hearing none, motion is carried. Commission, are there any further comments or discussions regarding this matter? Hearing no further comments, Dan, can you review the draft standards of approval on these requests? Sure. Uh, I'll just kind of give a brief summary so the the drafted standards are not only in your guys' staff reports, uh, they're also on the screen right now. But uh, as a general summary um, for the special use, it's um, that the proposed parking exception is safe for the public and employees, uh, that there's adequate utilities, um, that it doesn't affect uh, negatively affect neighboring property owners' enjoyment of their properties or their or impair property values. Uh, that the site is already developed, has adequate utilities, uh, and no additional utilities are needed for the site. Um, that the light, the site layout is designed for safe circulation of trucks, employees, and the public, um, and that generally all other village codes are met. And then lastly, that this is a positive economic development tool for the village um, that allows for an existing successful business to continue to grow and employ people within the community. Thank you for reviewing the draft standards for approval. There are two motions for this item. Is there a motion regarding the substantial deviation? Commissioner Gaskell, I'll make the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> make a motion to recommend that the village board grant the social use permit, the substantial deviation from the Hickory Creek PUD with an exception from the zoning ordinance <clears throat> for front yard parking location. To the petitioner, Robert Bettinardi, on behalf of Excel Technologies Incorporated, to permit site changes at 7800 Graphics Drive in the ORIPD Office and Restricted Industrial Hickory Creek PUD Zoning District in accordance with the plan submitted and the DOT findings of fact as proposed by the village staff in June 3rd, 2021 staff report. This is Commissioner Gatto. I second that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Gaskell, seconded by Commissioner Gatto. Secretary, may I have a roll call? Commissioner Manning? Yes. Commissioner Gatto? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Gatto? Yes. Yes. Okay. Commissioner West? Yes. Uh, and then Commissioner Gaskell? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Aitkinson? Yes. And Commissioner Lashuto? Yes. Motion carried. May I have the second motion regarding site plan approval? I make a motion to grant the petitioner Robert Bertinardi on behalf of Excel Technologies Incorporated site plan approval for proposed site changes at 7800 Graphics Drive in the ORID PD Office and Restricted Industrial Hickory Creek PUD Zoning District in accordance with the plan submitted and subject to the following conditions. One, approval is subject to the final review, final engineering review and 
approval by the village engineer. Number two, approval is subject to the acceptance of the request for a special use for a substantial deviation to the PDU by the village board. And number three, all landscaping removed shall be replaced with comparable landscaping around the front pond area, including the four trees and any shrubs or bushes. Ms. Commissioner Lashuda, I second that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Manny, seconded by Commissioner Lashuda. Secretary, may I have a roll call? Commissioner Manny? Yes. Commissioner Gatto? Yes. Commissioner West? Yes. Commissioner Gaskill? Yes. Commissioner Aikidson? Yes. And Commissioner Loshudo? Yes. Motion carried. The request will be reviewed by the Village Board at their June 15th meeting. <clears throat> I'll be in contact. <clears throat> The third item we have this evening is a public hearing to consider recommending that the Village Board grant Chris Carlino on behalf of Scannell Properties, contract purchaser, a map amendment rezoning and a special use permit for a planned unit development for 110.94 acres at 19501 to 19701 Harlem Avenue, northeast corner of Harlem Avenue and Volmer Road. Upon annexation, the parcels are proposed to be zoned ORIPD, office and restricted industrial planned unit development. The granting of these requests will allow for the lots to be developed with three light industrial buildings totaling approximately 1,262,000 square feet in size. This item also includes review of the final plat of resubdivision for approval by the village board and final site plan and architectural approval for phase one work. Also, I have the certification of publication here in front of me. May I have a motion to open the public hearing? Commissioner Gaskin makes a motion. I second that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Gaskell, seconded by Commissioner Manny. I will ask for a voice vote. Are there any opposed to this motion? Hearing none, motion is carried. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter will be sworn in before they speak after staff's presentation. Dan, please proceed with your presentation. Thanks, Chair, Chairperson Les. Um, the, as with the other ones, uh, the staff report's attached to the minutes, so that way um, we don't have to repeat everything in the staff report. Uh, this is the public hearing with the workshop happening two weeks ago. Uh, we went into pretty fine to detail. I, I probably will keep this a little higher level here uh, in terms of what their project is and kind of the, some of the main points as well as kind of some of the changes that have happened uh, with the open items between those, those meetings. So this is an example of kind of where we're going uh, in a picture of building one that will be uh, proposed uh, to be developed on this site, uh, which is at the corner of uh, Balmer Road and Harlem Avenue. Uh, the site is 110.94 acres, again, on that northeast corner of Balmer Road and Harlem Avenue. Uh, the parcels are located in unincorporated Cook County. It's currently under their R4 zoning district. Not the same as our R4 zoning district, but similar, it's a single family zoning uh, that's out there currently. So the site has an existing vacant home located on it as well as some accessory structures from the previous uh, farming work on the property um, that aren't utilized currently. Uh, the land's largely been used for agricultural purposes um, within the last few decades. Um, in 1980, the village of Tinley Park and Matson for these properties had a boundary agreement uh, that designated basically Balmer Road as that boundary line that, that, that would kind of divide the two, um, the two municipalities in terms of where uh, their boundary line would be. So the north side being Tinley Park um, and then the south side being uh, the village of Matson. Um, the, this was done in 1980, it expired naturally or, or kind of by right in 2000 um, and efforts to kind of extend that boundary agreement with the village of Matson having continued um, or haven't been successful to this time. Uh, these boundary agreements usually kind of just allow for um, reasonable, responsible kind of annexation. It allows communities to plan for utilities in advance for these areas. 
um, and kind of create logical boundaries. So the north side of this, you can kind of see, would kind of fit in at Simmons Park, and everything south would kind of continue with Matson. Um, and everything west is either Tinley or unincorporated uh, Will County, which is the Frankfurt Square subdivision. So it kind of delineated all of those, those areas. Um, the subject property on the north side of Balmer Road is directly across from that Amazon distribution center, uh, which was approved in 2019 by the Village of Matson. Uh, there wasn't too much public input, so for the most part, Tinley Park learned about that at the same time as the public did, um, right around the same time. So there wasn't too much public input or public process there, um, and that's really where the village was was looking to acquire this property to hopefully control its destiny a little bit um, where it, if it went into the village of Matson, we wouldn't necessarily know or have too much input similarly to, to how Amazon was. Um, with that Amazon Fulfillment Center there, it's, it's really kind of changed the trajectory of this area though. Um, it, light industrial really wasn't the thought for many years on these properties. It was either to continue the entertainment district or do some kind of commercial shopping but but with that Amazon uh, development there it's really kind of driven that market demand for for light industrial properties here um, uh, on top of that it's really kind of the only market demand for this property is residential really hasn't worked well there's there's a lot of um, sorry there's the the Amazon building, it's a four-story, largely robotic uh, Amazon building. Uh, and then on this image, you can kind of see there's, it's, it's two parcels with a lot of it, or, or, a, or a large chunk of that property being floodplain out there. So it makes it difficult to develop um, homes as well as any type of commercial out here to develop within a floodplain, within a wetland, um, and this close to a creek. Uh, commercial is also obviously down with e-commerce, but part of what's driving this proposed development is also the reason why um, commercial doesn't really work at this site as well. Um, and there's not a lot of density uh, in terms of homes in that area to support much more residential or much more commercial. Um, and property taxes also uh, play play an important role in this as well um, with residential compared to industrial. So industrial can kind of help support and can handle some of those higher property taxes where residential home developers really don't look at that as a net positive. So just within the last uh, couple of years and especially with Amazon there, again, really driving that, that market for light industrial for this property. Uh, so the proposed development is, is looking at doing about two to three industrial buildings, um, at least two and potentially three. Uh, what you'll see on the site plans is they're showing you three buildings and three lots out here that could be developed, uh, but those buildings two and three could potentially be combined and reconfigured to, to one lot out there. Um, this would be about 1,262,000 square feet of industrial space, approximately, depending on how the buildings kind of finally lay out. Um, and this overall development's before you today as a PUD, so that's the planned unit development uh, that would regulate this area and act as kind of a mini zoning code uh, for that overall development, as well as final approvals for uh, really what's building one here for the site plan and architectural. Um, the, the, the site requires annexation, so that's not really what's before you guys today. That'll go to the village board, uh, but your guys' kind of view of this is really to say, okay, they're, they're, they're coming to be annexed to us. Uh, what do we rezone it as? and then really the PUD requirements as well that are before you. So they have um, really kind of the two options out here based on what they're looking for um, is ORI, which is Office and Restricted Industrial, and then M1, which is our General Manufacturing District. Uh, we kind of work with the developer as staff to, to really recommend ORI zoning, uh, which is a little less intensive in terms of exterior effects of that zoning district. 
Um, and that's kind of similar to what you'll see on like the south side of 183rd Street um, in our light industrial parks out there. So it, it's been used before in the past for these types of developments. Um, and we really, we recommend that essentially with a PUD that allows for the distribution of warehousing uses um, that again are kind of really driving this development overall. Um, and then the M1 zoning district again is, is the alternative was, was not our recommendation uh, just because those are a little bit heavier in terms of the environmental and exterior effects. So, uh, the planned unit development itself again it if you read the definition that's in the staff report or in the zoning code, this really kind of fits what the PUD was designed for, which is a large development um, that's trying to do something a little bit unique that doesn't kind of fit our our zoning code, which is very kind of strict with its, its specific standards. Um, and something that's phased over time, maybe and isn't maybe getting developed all at once. So it really kind of fits what we're looking to do there. And, what the PUD allowances were really designed for. Um, before you today is also the final plan of subdivision, and that'll be included with the PUD uh, documents as well. So that really regulates kind of how the lots will lay out, how the land use uh, kind of works between themselves um, and cross access. Uh, the proposed zoning and use again allows. Um, for certain use, for for just certain uses beyond what uh, that ORI zoning district allows for. Uh, and that was the recommendation of the plan commission too, and they kind of like the the ORI zoning coming out of the workshop meeting. So. Um, overall, the. The kind of main concern we had with this proposal uh, coming forward here on Harlem, again, not really thought of as, as going to be industrial originally, is how does this look from Harlem Avenue? Um, the kind of what drives this overall development is how the lot is laid out overall there. It's obviously very long from a north-south standpoint, and then not quite as deep uh, when you look at the west and east out uh, widths there for how these buildings fit in there. So um, we tried to kind of rotate them to move the docks from these maybe facing interior into Volmer and not so much to Harlem, uh, but it didn't quite work um, when you rotate these buildings and makes them a lot smaller and you do a lot, do a lot more of those buildings. So, uh, and maybe the developer can, and the petitioner can touch on more of the marketing side of this, uh, but their demand is really for these kind of cross back buildings uh, that are out in this this site. So um, that's kind of how they came up with this overall site plan was trying to fit as much square footage, obviously, as they can out there to add some value, add more jobs, um, and have a better development, more options there, but try and fit it all in <coughs> along with the roads and parking required for that development. Um, but to kind of mitigate those effects on Harlem is where we're really looking for them to add a berm um, along Harlem Avenue that would be a landscape berm, so heavy landscaping that's elevated on a three to four foot high berm, uh, minimum three feet when the docks are facing Harlem Avenue. So if there's docks or any exterior storage is when that berm will come into play. Uh, it drops off for building one, which doesn't have those docks facing Harlem Avenue. There'll still be a small berm there, but it won't be the three to four feet that you'll get uh, when the docks front Harlem Avenue. Um, and this is something we really pushed for early on and the developer was receptive to. Um, it's kind of been a partnership with them to, to work on this development and make it kind of fit w within the vision that Tinley had out here. Um, make sure it doesn't detract visually from, from the community. So they really worked on that berm, fitting it in, and in the right away and on their property out there. Uh, and this is a cut sheet that was in your packets as well, kind of showing how uh, the visual side of this berm will work and how it kind of blocks views from the trailer storage as well as the trucks that are docked in the building um, and then how 
essentially if you're on Harlem Avenue, you'll just kind of see the top of the building, uh, the, the building designs there. Uh, another big advantage of this uh, uh, for the village at Tinley Park is the extension of the water main kind of beyond what's required for their development. So there's their development there, which is in the star um, to service that development, they would just have to go use the purple line. Um, they could, may, they would maybe need to loop it on Harlem, uh, but they wouldn't need to do that just to service their development, even though that covers it. Um, but then even going beyond their development scope, they're going even further to the east of this and then looping it. So the connection will go from all the way down to Harlem, all the way across Balmer and connect our existing water line uh, to the water line that's in the Odyssey subdivision. So creating a full loop of that system um, without it, a water main break up from the Odyssey subdivision could mean you basically shut off the entire water to that entire subdivision. Uh, but with this loop, it means we, you have some redundancy there. If they shut off part of it, they can get water in another way. Maybe it's a couple homes instead of an entire subdivision. So from a public safety standpoint, uh, that's a big advantage from the village to have that loop. Uh, it also tends to work better for the system to have less breaks and just have a full loop there uh, that doesn't dead end at any locations. Uh, on top of the water main, they're also doing other utility upgrades. So sanitary is being extended, obviously, to their site. Uh, and then uh, stormwater uh, will tie into our stormwater systems as well. Uh, from, an ac from an access standpoint, uh, they've done some pretty good due diligence uh, working with their traffic consultant, KLOA, um, as well as our village engineer and our village engineering consultants to kind of work on how this access works the best. Uh, there's a couple signalized intersections that are set, so Benton Drive has an existing traffic signal, as well as the new light that will go in as part of Amazon on Walmart Drive. Um, the, the, what's labeled as a right in, right out, the second one on the left is actually a full access, um, not a right in, right out, but that's a location um, that they're looking to put a, or, or the village and the petitioner are looking to, to try and pursue a signal at that intersection as well. Uh, it's really up to IDOT at this point and, and not the village, uh, but we have uh, worked with them to um, hopefully do the traffic study at that location, uh, see if it's warranted through the IDOT standards, and then if if it is, we can pursue it through IDOT to get that there. Um, and that's really, that they'd like it. Uh, it would help, I think, the residents to the west. We've heard from, from those residents um, at previous meetings for the Lenny's Gas and Watch that it's difficult to turn out into Harlem Avenue. So this will be hopefully one way um, for them to access that. Because otherwise, without that, they kind of have to jog through some subdivisions basically to get out to lights to make that lot go north on on Harlem. So it, at the end of the day, it's not the petitioner or the village's call here. It'll be IDOT, but they have worked with us um, to and are committed to kind of pursuing trying to get that traffic light there as much as possible. So. <coughs> uh, overall circulation. Here again, they've kind of planned for it throughout the site. Um, the phase one circulation is really just the, the phase one building, uh, the two access points there to the north side of the property, and then an access road that connects to Benton Drive, uh, which is their signalized intersection there. So they'll have kind of full access to a signalized intersection, and so that way they can access Harlem Avenue and get to Walmer Avenue as well. Um, and access both I-80 and I-57 from this location. Um, and this is, again, part of your final approval here. The, the rest of this property beyond just phase one uh, would be covered in phase two or phase three. Um, and those would come back before you guys for the final site plan approvals on the project. Uh, the parking side of this, so there, it, it's a little, 
difficult here, but the plan commission felt fairly comfortable with that work at the workshop um, that the parking proposed with building one uh, seems sufficient in terms of the number of stalls that they're proposing. Um, and as we discussed at that, it's kind of up to the developer to, to regulate that. It's, it's going to kind of push who, who can go into that building, um, what kind of tenants, because they're looking at the parking as well. So, um, so if, if parking's an issue, they're not going to be able to have the tenant go in there. Uh, it's also the smallest building out of the three, so the, the room for kind of an error there is it's a little bit more flexible with it building being built specu speculative. Uh, that building doesn't have a known user, so it's a little difficult to pinpoint what the parking demand will be. Uh, but they fall in kind of within the standards of the industry um, with what their parking stall uh, per thousand square feet is on that site. Uh, overall, we also analyzed the, the parking overall on the site with the conceptual plans, but those will be finalized uh, and would come back before you. So at that point, we might know who those users are and might be a little more concrete instead of a speculative building. Um, we can always come back and look at those, but those buildings also kind of fall in line with, again, what, um, what kind of the standard practice for these are. Uh, but there is a wide range of if you do more warehousing or if you do something that's higher unemployment like Amazon, Obviously, there's a, a wide range there with what the parking demands would be. Um, they've landscaped the site pretty extensively, um, putting a berm uh, not only along Harlem, but having the landscape buffer uh, largely meeting our, our landscape requirements all the way around the site. So the landscape code doesn't fully uh, get complied here, but the code really isn't well designed terms of regulating a large industrial development. <coughs> and as for landscape islands, for example, <coughs> which isn't easy to put in when you have trucks uh, and truck down. So they've really kind of emphasized the surrounding landscaping, uh, really buffering the views from the outside looking in on this site, um, and ensuring that uh, it looks, looks good to any of the neighboring properties and to any of the neighboring roadways. There is a fairly extensive separation between this development and the uh, homes. So there's a buffer. The, the closest neighboring homes are really to the east of this, which is the Odyssey subdivision. Um, they have a buffer along their subdivision line. There's also a natural creek buffer um, from the creek that goes through the, the property to the east. And then there'll be the buffer for this development as well. So you're almost going to have three three sets of landscape buffers um, looking from those homes towards this development. Uh, the, the separation's pretty large too, uh, larger than what some of these maps make it if you've been out there. It's a pretty pretty large area, um, one over 1,300 feet between the property lines and then over 1,700 feet uh, from the homes to the actual buildings themselves there. So a pretty pretty large separation of buildings. Um, the, there are still some existing uh, engineering items kind of open on the site. Most of them fairly minor though um, and can be covered part of the final engineering approval. Uh, so we've worked on we place that as a condition like we do with most uh, most of the developments to have that kind of everything here be subject to that final engineering review of not only the, the final site plan but also the final plan of subdivision. Uh, the, the lighting on the site uh, we've added as part of the PUD regulations and part of the PUD ordinance will be that there's basically matching lighting out there between all the properties, not only the fixtures um, on the building, but also the light poles have some consistent look. Um, architecturally on the, on the site was, uh, this is for building one and it's your final architectural approval before you guys today. Uh, there wasn't too many concerns at the workshop meeting. So uh, that's largely been locked the same. 
with buildings two or building two and three, uh, depending on how many they have. We don't want something that's maybe necessarily matching, but we are going to be looking for if there's something, some architectural elements, some colors, something you can kind of carry over to make it look like a nice tied together uh, PUD development. Uh, but we do believe the architectural standards uh, that we adopted a couple years ago uh, hold up pretty well here um, in terms of how, how you guys will look at the architecture for those buildings when they come forward. Uh, signage isn't, it's learned, it's not really part of this because it's a speculative building uh, for building one and buildings two and three are just conceptual. Uh, there are some exceptions built into the PUD though to allow for off-site signage between all of these properties that will be subdivided uh, and that might be needed for the ground signs as well as the uh, directional signs um, and then largely the, the rest of the wall signs for the sites will just comply with the zoning code. So. Uh, there are, for the uses added to the, uh, to the PUD, it's warehouses, distribution plants, and wholesale establishments. It also allows docks to face um, uh, a, a, a runaway of a principal road. So, um, they can face the road as part of this, and that's really due to the, the, the intentional design, again, of that landscape buffer and berm on the site. Uh, there's a number of exceptions to the code. We, don't, we won't go through each one of those. We kind of talked about them at the, the workshop, as well as um, some of the items we already walked through today. Um, and it's really there to, to allow some flexibility for this to all fit in there with a focus, again, on looking at how the traffic works out here, looking how the landscaping works, and how this ties into the, to the community that's out there. Um, also, how to mitigate the truck traffic and any uh, traffic concerns that might have happened out there. Uh, lastly is the final plan of approval. The one on the screen right now is not the most updated, but the most updated was in the in the packet, um, and that has three lots now, three lots for the three um, buildings. So you'll have lot one um, <coughs> for building one, lot two for building two, and lot three for building three. And then the fourth lot is the village's tower site, um, which they've dedicated to the village uh, for increased uh, village emergency radio communications out there. Um, so you'll have those four four lots. If they do decide to consolidate building two and three, um, they've come back before to do a plot of consolidation um, to make those one lot. Um, additionally, we have uh, the easements on the property. Um, so the landscape easements, uh, the utility easements, um, and some items there. There, so that really make all these properties come together. Normally you get some um, covenants that, that would be out for these properties and regulate it from a private perspective. Um, so we really want these easements that are on the plat um, to, to come forward there. Um, with the plat, we do have um, a condition on there that the landscape easement and access easement language be submitted to the village prior to going to the village board for approval. Uh, we just want to make sure on the, on the plat that was submitted, it basically said it'd be on a separate document. So we want to make sure um, that those two easements, that the language is acceptable to the village before it goes to the village board. And then the final plat, again, subject to kind of final engineering approval from the village engineer. And that's it. Um, We've worked with the developer over the last week, largely on kind of the engineering side of this and the comments really make sure everything can work in terms of stormwater, traffic, uh, that what they've done is, is sufficient and that has been our, our engineers' belief that they've, they've gone pretty far with the engineering on this beyond most of the projects that come before you guys um, because they're 
they were basically concerned too. How do we make this work with the floodplain? How do we make this work with the amount of detention and the size of the buildings? Um, so they've done pretty far, and there's just some loose ends there to tie up before they would come before permitting. So I believe that's it from the staff report. Uh, but overall, like we said at the workshop too, uh, we've kind of been working with the developer to make sure this is this is a good development for Tinley and a good development out there, um, and that Tinley really can control this, have it be brought up to our standards um, from a development perspective and control it going forward. Thank you. Commission, do you have any comments or discussion on this matter? Madam Chair, oh, before we begin, I believe um, oh. Commissioner Gatto has um, uh, something like he to wants to raise. I'd like to myself from this um, item because I have a personal interest with the land. Okay, thank you. Does that interrupt our quorum? No, we still have no, Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, Commissioner Gaskell, do you have anything to add? I don't have anything to add. I just think this is a great situation here, uh, uh, something that's good for Tinley Park. And I strongly urge we all to stand behind it. Commissioner Aitchison? I have no comment at this time. Commissioner Manny? No comment. Commissioner Lasciuto? No comment. Does the petitioner wish to present anything to the commission on this item? Uh, Dan Harrington with Scannell. Um, we don't really have anything to add. We appreciate uh, your time tonight hearing our petition and, uh, and look forward to working with Tinley Park in the future. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? If there are no further questions or discussion, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Manny, seconded by Commissioner Gaskell. I will ask for a voice vote. Are there any opposed to this motion? Hearing none, motion is carried. Commissioner, are there any further comments or discussions regarding this matter? Hearing no further comments, Dan, can you review the draft standard of approval on these requests? There's a lot here, and I'm starting to lose my voice down, so um, I'll just give the summary again, but they are on the slides. They are in the staff reports that are available online, and it'll be in the minutes as well, too. Um, so the, there's the standard for rezoning, which really takes into account the existing uses nearby um, and, and how it's currently developed, as well as how it's been planned out there um, for the stoning district. Um, looking at making sure that it doesn't uh, negatively affect any neighboring properties and how they enjoy it or any <coughs> uh, property values. Um, also the, the suitability for what's being proposed uh, and what the zoning district allows for. Also looking into uh, the length of time the property's been vacant uh, under its current zoning as well as the need for the proposed proposed use um, and the, uh, the thoroughness of which the village is planned for this, um, which really this development fits into all of those categories um, is outlined in these uh, standards. Uh, for a PUD, uh, it's really that the, kind of the standards for a PUD are that it's at least five acres under a single ownership, which this is, um, that the PUD will not injure or damage um, any of the surrounding property values again, which this, this would not, um, and actually enhance the property that's, that's out there, uh, that the uses permitted in the development are desirable, uh, that the development does not impose an undue burden on any public facilities, which on that one they are extending uh, any necessary utilities on the property. Um, that this can be uh, substantially completed within a reasonable time period, um, and that the street system in the PUD and the surrounding property can, can handle the property. Um, that the property, uh, um, the, the road system is essentially adequate, and that uh, that any covenants or restrictions are put in the, on the property, 
and then that the developer records any easements or covenants required uh, to operate the, the site. So this covers all of those for a PUD, which are fairly unique and probably something that doesn't come before you often. Um, but those are all covered there um, in your staff report. So. Thank you, Dan. Uh, there are four motions for this item. Is there a motion regarding the rezoning? This is Commissioner Lasciuto. I make a motion to recommend that the village board grant the petitioner, Chris Carlino, on behalf of Scannell Properties, contract purchaser, a rezoning of the properties located at 19501 through 19701 Harlem Avenue upon annexation from being unincorporated to the ORI Office and re uh, Restricted Industrial Zoning District and adopt the findings of fact submitted by the applicant and as proposed by village staff in the June 3rd, 2021 staff report. Commissioner Gaskell seconds. Motion made by Commissioner Lasciuto, seconded by Commissioner Gaskell. Secretary, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Manning? Yes. Commissioner Gatto? Recused. Um, Commissioner West? Yes. Commissioner Gaskell? Yes. Commissioner Aitchison? Yes. Commissioner Loschuto? Yes. Motion carried. May I have the second motion regarding the special use for a PUD? <laughs> Dan, can you go to the second? I make a motion to recommend that the village board grant a special use permit for a planned unit development for the Tilling Park Business Park Business Park to the petitioner Chris Carlino on behalf of Scano Properties contract purchaser for a 110.94 acre development with approximately 1,262,000 square feet of light industrial floor space to be completed in up to three phases at 19501 through 19701 Harlem Avenue upon rezoning to the ORI zoning district in accordance with the plan submitted and listed herein and adopt findings of fact as proposed by the village staff in the June 3rd, 2021 staff report. This is Commissioner Lashuda. I second that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Manny, seconded by Commissioner Lashuda. Secretary, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Manny? Yes. Commissioner West? Yes. Commissioner Gasco? Yes. Commissioner Aitchison? Yes. Commissioner Lashuda? Yes. Motion carried. May I have the third motion regarding the site plan? Commissioner Gasco, I make a motion to grant the petitioner Chris Carlino on behalf of Skinnell Properties. Final, flat, final site plan approval to construct phase one, including 195,000 square foot building, and concept approval for the total of 110.94 acre light industrial development with approximately 1,262,000 square feet in floor space with two or three buildings at 19501 through 19701 Harlem Avenue in the ORI PD zoning district in accordance with the plan submitted and listed herein subject property conditions. Site plan approval is subject to the approval of the annexation, rezoning, PUD, and final plat by the village board. Site plan approval is subject to final engineering plan review and approval. The Harlem Avenue landscape berm shall be installed with phase one from the start of the building one to Benton, to Benton Drive. Site plan approval is subject to the final landscape plan review, which shall have specific species and planting details submitted with the final permits for each phase. I second that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Gaskell, seconded by Commissioner Manny. Secretary, may I have a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner West? Yes. Commissioner Gaskill? Yes. Commissioner Aitchison? 
Yes. Commissioner Lashuto. Yes. Motion carried. May I have the fourth motion regarding the final plat? Dan. I make a motion to recommend that the Village Board grant approval to the petitioner Chris Carlino on, Carlino on behalf of Scannell Properties contract purchaser final plat of subdivision approval for the Tinley Park Business Center subdivision in accordance with the final plat submitted and listed herein subject to the following conditions. One, the approval is subject to final engineering plan approval by the village engineer. And two, the landscape easement and access easement language and documents are located on the final plat or submitted as a separate document. The easement language, language shall be approved by the village staff and village attorney before village board consideration. I second that. Motion made by Commissioner Manny, seconded by Commissioner Gaskell. Secretary, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Manny? Yes. Commissioner West? Yes. Commissioner Gaskell? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Lashuto. Yes. Motion carried. The requests will be reviewed by the Village Board at their June 15th meeting. Staff, do you have any comments for the good of the order? Uh, part of the packet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you guys, now with that done, if you guys want to make yes. a motion and maybe approve the May 20th meeting minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the May 20th minutes. I second that. This is Commissioner Lashuda. I second that motion. Um, I'll just do a voice vote. Is anyone opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, staff, were there any public comments submitted or members of the public present wishing to speak today? Um, I don't believe so. We didn't have any comments submitted before the deadline uh, from a communication standpoint, the next meeting is June 17th. Uh, yeah, June 17th, uh, where Peach Breath Market will be back before you for the public hearing, um, as well as an eight-unit apartment building looking uh, for final site plan approval on Oak Park Avenue, so a smaller one uh, for the old Michael A's and Pops used to be on Oak Park Avenue. So uh, we have a couple items there. Um, the village board approved the faculty Starbucks uh, on Harlem Avenue, so that uh, is in for permit, as well as the one on the Grange where they'll be converting the uh, MD Financial Bank. So both those are moving forward pretty quickly. Um, that, that's about it for me. Uh, um, and then before you guys was that apart, uh, there was an apartment size variation. Um, that they saw before you, um, that is the building that's kind of behind the Durbans, um, and that was denied by the village board. Um, so he can either de decide if he wants to change it, um, if he can get it as a bigger size, um, or fix some of the site concerns they had, um, he could reapply, but that was denied by the village board. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, that's it for us. Make sure to. Lori's kind of going to be one of the point people from now on. So we're doing another shift from Kathy, who gratefully helped us out. So I think she's she's not going to be around as much now, but she was uh, a great help here while we transitioned from Barb leaving um, to now Lori being here and a big help. So um, a lot of the communications will be coming before her. And um, I'll say you guys have done a good job responding to us and stuff, but if you can keep that up uh, when we send out the uh, the packets just let us know if you're coming or not um, again we kind of know the meetings in advance so if you know you're not going to be at something a month in advance tell us because it kind of helps us be able to plan uh, for you guys to make sure we have a quorum so, uh, that's, that's it so if there's nothing further i will entertain a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting so moved second Motion made by Commissioner Manny, seconded by Commissioner Gaskell. I will take a voice vote. Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned at 8.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Good night, everyone. Good night.